hope she traveled. And are women who made a difference. Aquila Kids gift to our community. Can you please spell your name and say it? My name is Robin Tanky. It's R-O-B-Y-N. T-A-N-K-E. Um, where were you born and where did you grow up? I am a La Crosse native. I was born and raised right here in La Crosse. In fact, I attended this very school. Um, what did you want to be when you were young? Well, when I was growing up, um, I was very uh, into music and um, I wanted to be an actress. So how crazy is that? <laughs> um, how old were you when you got interested in the Gunners American Foundation? Well, I was um, an adult, and I had already worked um, for many years in uh, the field of marketing, and um, I worked in shopping center marketing. I was the uh, marketing director at Valley View Mall, and I worked there for 12 years. Um, the opportunity. Um, opened up at Gunderson Lutheran for me to explore work in fundraising and so I was I was well into adulthood when I discovered the world of fundraising. Um, does your family support you? Absolutely. Um, I, my husband and I have been married 35 years and together we have uh, raised a family. We both went back to school um, to receive our higher education degrees as adults and my husband has been very supportive. In fact, if it was not for the 50-50 kind of partnership that we share in our marriage, um, I would not have been able to work outside the home while raising two children. Um, who has influenced you in your life? Well, there have been a number of people that have influenced me, and I guess I would start by saying my mother was a great influence on me. She um, raised five children by herself and worked outside the home in order to do that, and I have a great deal of respect for my mom watching her um, work and uh, support her family, and it made me realize as a young woman that I needed to um, do something to support myself and not rely on others uh, to help help me through. So my mother's been a great influence on me. I also had great mentors in my work. When I worked at Valley View Mall, I had a wonderful boss that allowed me to grow and um, do things that were creative and not necessarily within my job description to enhance my work. And, um, and I've had folks at Gunderson Lutheran too that have been great mentors. I have not. I've traveled a great deal across the country and um, overseas, but I have never lived anywhere else. And I, I love the beauty of our region and the people uh, that live here. Has your husband ever disliked your choices or ideas? Um, I have to say no. Um, he has not. Well, what dreams did you have for your kids? Well, I think all parent hopes that they will raise um, children to be respectful and decent human beings. Um, the dreams I had for my children, I have two sons, um, is that they would grow up and um, be nice people, um, treat people the way that they would want to be treated. Um, and of course, we always want our children to be successful, and I had hoped that for them too, but that was secondary. Um, I just wanted them to be decent human beings, and they are. Did you have any other career ideas? Um, as I said, when I first um, graduated from college and went into the workforce, I worked in marketing, and my, my job was in shopping center marketing, and I loved it. It was, an, it was exciting work. Um, but the world that I work in now, and that is of fundraising and helping others and raising money for good causes is probably the most rewarding work <coughs> I think that one could ask to have. Did your parents help you with your career at all? Um, other than my mother just encouraging us always to do the best that we can so that we can uh, be self-supporting, um, that was probably the best advice I received from my mother. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? 
Oh, that's a good question. Um, I see myself in 10 years probably doing the same work that I'm doing now for the same organization. Um, of course, the field of healthcare is constantly growing and changing and technology changes. So I see opportunities um, to do a variety of different types of fundraising in the future that would involve um, more high tech, um, new buildings, we're always growing at Gunderson Lutheran and, and uh, so our, my world in fundraising will change as technology changes and a, as the needs of our community change. Um, but I really don't have any uh, plans to leave what I'm doing. Um, as I said, I, I, I love my work, it's very rewarding, um, it's fun, it's exciting and um, I think I'm going to be right where I am in 10 years. Who gave you the idea of paying Mrs. Octoberfest? Well, um, I didn't, um, <coughs> the I didn't, didn't necessarily come from me. Um, the Mrs. Oktoberfest role is a very honorable um, title to have in our community. I consider it probably one of the most um, greatest forms of recognition a woman can receive in La Crosse. Um, there's a group, it's the um, Mrs. Oktoberfest Selection Committee, and they make nominations of people in the community who have done um, things to better our community through volunteer work. My name was submitted to the committee and um, ultimately I was chosen by that group to serve. They notified me um, in <coughs> May of last year and asked if I would take on the title and the role of Mrs. Oktoberfest and um, that was to begin in October. So it's a year-long commitment and um, I'm delighted to represent La Crosse and our community in places all over the um, tri-state area. Um, when we travel to represent our fair city. Okay. Um, can you tell us about your career at Gunderson Lutheran? Sure. Um, my role at Gunderson Lutheran Medical Foundation is that of Senior Director of Development. Um, I'm responsible for the fundraising programs that occur in our organization to raise money for a variety of causes, mostly our uh, research um, efforts and medical education and um, community service programs. Also, Children's Miracle Network falls under our, our foundation, um, so we're responsible for raising money to help people um, to further our research efforts in cancer, in heart, um, lung disease, a variety of different um, disciplines um, are researched at our facility and research dollars don't come from patient um, from patient costs, we have to raise money outside what people pay for their health care in order to support those programs. So my role is to ultimately oversee um, the year-long activities that are that go on in order to raise money for those programs. What is a foundation? The foundation is the nonprofit fundraising arm of Gunderson Lutheran. It's a, what we call a 501c3, it's a nonprofit organization that does not, um, it doesn't pay taxes basically and we are able to raise money outside, um, outside <coughs> the normal cost of doing business at Gunderson Lutheran. We raise money to support programs that are not supported by patient revenues. Um, so the foundation um, in, in a broad term is that of the um, fundraising arm of the organization. Um, like how did you learn about the Gunderson Lutheran? That's a very good question because there's not a lot of there's not any college courses that one can take to be a fundraiser. Um, and most people that find themselves in, the, in fundraising as a profession don't start out in fundraising. They start out in other areas um, like public relations and marketing and that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> I first learned of the job opening at Gunderson uh, through a newspaper ad and it simply was looking for someone to come in and help organize fundraising special events and that's how my career started. 
Um, I took the job at uh, Gunderson Lutheran in 1992 and um, have served in many roles, uh, first as a special events coordinator, uh, and then I was responsible for raising money for the annual fund, which is to raise money for the operating expenses of the foundation. Um, and then my role moved more into special uh, special projects and special appeals, and now I'm primarily responsible for major gifts. Um, but when I first started, um, I really knew nothing about fundraising. As I said, my specialty was in marketing. Um, so there are a lot of many uh, courses that are um, put on throughout the country sponsored by the Association of Fundraising Professionals where um, if you're new in your career you can go and spend time uh, in class in the classroom to learn more about fundraising so I took the opportunity to do that and spent many weeks over the course of uh, several years um, getting an education specifically in fundraising, which ultimately led to my certification. Um, my title, my certification is CFRE, and it stands for Certified Fundraising Executive. Um, what kind of donating do you do? Pardon me? What kind of donating do you do? What kind of donating do I do personally? <laughs> yeah. What kinds of organizations do I support? Sure. Um, I support a variety of causes, and my husband and I have a real fondness for the Boys and Girls Club of La Crosse because our two sons grew up there and participated in many activities, so we support that group. Um, my passion is also for the arts because I have such a fondness for music, and um, I have not only served on the board of directors for the La Crosse Symphony Orchestra, uh, the United Funds for the Arts and Humanities and the La Crosse Community Theater, uh, but I also support all those organizations financially as well. Um, what did you have to go through to get where you are now in your career? Well, it was a long road, uh, <laughs> and I, um, I just, I always knew that I wanted to work professionally, so I always uh, kept that in the forefront of my mind. Um, I got married right out of high school and my husband and I started a family very young. Um, I didn't return to college until I was a full-time working mother and I was determined to do it. So I went back to school uh, primarily uh, nights, um, but I accomplished <coughs> that and, and got my degree and went on to um, work professionally. Are there different kinds of jobs in like the Gunderson Lutheran Foundation? There's a variety of jobs in the foundation, which one would not um, guess. Um, our foundation has about 100 employees, and those employees range from um, our medical education department is all of the residents and the um, health care workers that come through the foundation to learn their role. So um, doctors that come right out of medical school come to the foundation and work in a variety of, of different areas um, doing their residency. And we have interns that come through and medical students that come through our foundation too. Um, and that's what we raise money for is, is those we're able to pay those, those individuals to come and work at our facility and also gain an education at the same time. In our research department, we have um, PhDs, MDs, uh, research techs um, that uh, work in the lab and um, study science um, in order to further uh, healthcare. So in addition to education and research employees, then we have development employees. And we have a team of about 17 people that work in our development department. Um, Children's Miracle Network. Um, we have other fundraisers in special events that put on uh, the variety show Pennies from Heaven and Stepping Out in Pink. Um, special event fundraising is big, and we also have other development officers like myself. So it's a wide variety of job opportunities in the world of our foundation. Um, what do you like go to different states or countries to motivate others? 
Um, I guess I have, in a sense, um, through my association that I belong to, the Association of Fundraising Professionals. I've had the opportunity to um, <coughs> speak at national and international conventions, um, mostly on fundraising topics, so I don't know how motivational that is, but um, I have taught the, the at those conferences. Um, and as Mrs. Oktoberfest, I do have the opportunity to speak to school groups and um, communities in our area, various festivals, about the importance of volunteerism. Um, after all, I was chosen as Mrs. Oktoberfest because of my volunteer work, not my professional work. And um, so I talk about, especially to school, uh, school children and school programs, the importance of giving back to your community that you live in. After doing everything that you wanted to do, would you change anything? Um, you know, I that's a hard question. Um, I've been very satisfied with my career and the, the road that I traveled to get there. Um, so I don't think I would change anything. Um, maybe I'd go to school right out of high school instead of getting married, but that would be the only thing. <laughs> um, it was, it was, it was um, a challenge to raise two children and work full time and go to school. And it's not the easiest way to get there. Um, but the message, I guess, is that it, it uh, you know, never give up, that you, that you can do it. Well, a usual evening in my home is um, I'm, my children are both um, out of college and out of the house and married and, and gone, so I'm alone a lot. My husband travels in his job, so a typical evening for me is to come home and get comfortable and uh, sit with a magazine with my cat on my lap um, and maybe do a little work. It's not very exciting. <laughs> Well, I would have to um, talk about um, an event that we do at Gunderson Lutheran that um, it took a long time to get off the ground and I was very committed to making it happen. Um, and that is the Stepping Out in Pink Walk for Breast Cancer Research. Um, it's been happening now for three years, but it took at least two years before the first walk to plan that event because it is such a huge undertaking and requires hundreds of volunteers to participate in it. And um, so someone came to me with the idea of doing a walk locally to support cancer research in our community um, many years ago. and. Um, I committed myself to making it happen, and there were a lot of hoops that we had to jump through in order to get there, but I was committed, and um, after two years of planning, our first walk was held, and um, it's a huge success. I mean, we're raising a lot of money to benefit patients right here in our area. Which wasn't very long ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> um, I think life is more difficult for children now, um, and I think every generation would say that. Um, I think time, as time goes by, <coughs> our lives get more complicated. They get more busy. Um, there's more choices. There's more marketing, there's more advertising, there's more confusion, um, there's more technology, which is a wonderful thing, um, but I also think it um, complicates uh, the simpleness of life a little bit. So I guess my answer would be that I think um, that it's probably tougher to be a kid these days. What kind of message would you want to send to today's youth? I guess um, 
The message that I would want to send is, um, hmm. That is a tough question. Just looking back in my own experience um, would be to stay focused, um, know what know what it is that you will want to want to accomplish in the short term. Um, don't look so long term, so far in the future that you can't um, imagine getting there. Um, look at where you want to be in two weeks or in two months or in one year. Um, I think there's a lot of pressure on young people today um, to participate in this and participate <laughs> in that and do well in this and do well in that. And um, there's so much going on in kids' lives that um, it's hard to stay focused. So I guess my, my advice would be to think short term and, s and live for the moment. How would you say technology has changed fundraising? That is a very good question because it's a very, it's a, it's a big challenge for us. Um, we typically have raised money through direct mail appeals and uh, personal asks, you know, sitting one-on-one -on -one with someone and asking them to support our cause. Uh, more and more people are giving online, as you might guess, and we um, at Gunderson Lutheran are spending this year, uh, as a matter of fact, 2009, in really focusing on how do we get into the world of online giving. Um, a lot of our donors make gifts online right now, but we don't do a good job of marketing our um, cause uh, online. We don't get that message out online, and we need to do that. So technology has really changed the, the, uh, the fundraising um, profession and uh, more and more people want to just sit down to a computer and find out who's doing the best work in a specific area, let's say um, cancer research. And if we don't have our technology up to speed, we won't be the choice of that donor when they go online. So it's definitely changed. I would, I would say yes, and I would say that I think all generations have an impact on the generation um, after them. Um, the your generation will look to um, our generation and see what it is that we did <laughs> that we left you, you know, um, to take care of. And you know, you look at today's world and and the wor and the issues that we have with the environment and with the economy and. Um, you'll look and say, what did they do right or what did they do wrong and how can we make a difference and how can we make change? Singing and dancing has been a part of my life, um, not for a long time, but it was when I was much younger. Um, Mrs. Oktoberfest's role is to go out and speak to groups and do parades and wave to the crowds and um, I wouldn't call it so much entertaining as it is just being a representative. Um, if that answers your question. Can you tell me about your parents and did they influence you to go into the medical field? Um, my parents um, did not influence me to go into healthcare fundraising. Um, my father became ill when I was very young and um, while he always had the best advice, um, he didn't live to see me in uh, work in the world of, of fundraising. Um, he was always very supportive in whatever I did. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, my mom was a great influence on me. Um, just because she worked so hard, she was a great role model. This podcast was brought to you by School in the Cooley students at Longfellow Middle School in La Crosse, Wisconsin. <laughs>